been called the greatest non-Olympic sports athlete of all time, setting records that have not even been challenged since his retirement. We are, of course, talking about none other than Todd. Oh yeah, Todd Z was always a great kid. He always drew attention to himself, but in a positive way. You know, if you put him on the high chair, whether you handed him Cheerios or mom's prescription pill bottles, he always just stacked with such passion. I mean, bagging $200 worth of Campbell's cream of mushroom soup in that amount of time, it's just downright impressive. I mean, we knew he had a future in it. Hell, he had a future in something. Maybe Twiddlywinks, Jenga, Blockus. Todd found his calling when Coach Lenny O'Toole walked into the store. But of course, Lenny was a fallen great from the Golden Age Cup stacking, bringing the sport to near tetherball levels. He was on top of the world until suffering a career-ending perlicue injury. We couldn't fix it. I knew Todd was destined for greatness. Um, after I saw him bag those cans, I knew that this was the man that could beat my records, and, and he, he was the man that he was going to be a champion. This, this man was going to be a champion. Lenny decided to coach Todd for this autumn's National American Cup Stacking Championship. We, uh, we train for three hours every other Sunday. Because we, we got that question. <coughs> that doesn't even work. Uh, Gosh, son of a bitch. <coughs> but, well, but the question, uh, physically, um, physically, it was a much more physical sport. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, I, I just, uh, so I trained him as hard as a Navy SEAL. Uh, probably harder than a Navy SEAL. Uh, if you were a physical guy and you were going up, you were going to get hurt. Physically. It, cup stacking consumed his life. Uh, three hours every other Sunday. It was, it was incredible. I didn't know Todd that well, but one time he did invite me to go whaling off the coast of Iwo Jima with him. And... And I partook, and uh, we actually shared a, <laughs> a magical evening together. We went to a whorehouse in Iwo Jima, and uh, actually I won this bad boy. Uh, and uh, I got this cup there because that night, well, frankly, I was Big Daddy. The every other Sunday for three hours technique paid off. When autumn rolled around, Todd was a force to be reckoned with. Due to lack of participants, Todd's only competition for the cup stack crown was the Brit, Chad Cumberbatch. It was, uh, the most, and you can quote me on this, the most intense cup stacking I have ever witnessed. Lenny was removed from the match after getting into a fist fight with the two fans in attendance that day. He then remembered there were no referees, and just walked back in. We're here in the final minutes of the match. Things are really heating up. We really are seeing some intense stacking. Oh! Oh, Todd's done it! He's done it! He's won! Oh, what a vague description of the events that just occurred! He's beaten Chad Cumberbatch! Todd is the new champion of the cup stacking world! And, uh, he did it. That boy did it. Uh, all that every other Sunday training, it, uh, it paid off, uh, paid off in the biggest way. <coughs> <coughs> But it was a short-lived victory. Chad Cumberbatch, due to non-existent security, was able to sneak a baseball bat into the event. After losing the tournament, he took Todd's life. It was the longest recorded murder in history. Uh, looking back on it, I uh, wish I had done more. Um, I, I wish I had done something, frankly. I, re I relive it every day, and uh, I, I panicked. I'm sorry. That boy was the best damn stacker. That boy was the best damn stacker I've ever seen. That will ever walk on this earth. And he's dead now. Nobody will beat him. Do we have? 
to do this when it's like, it's four degrees outside. A career that was cut short by misfortune. It was the story of Todd, the greatest cup stacker of all time.